guys this is like a quick video on demand and supply so when you're drawing your demand and supply if there's anything that comes up with demand and supply in your business exam you sort of know how to draw things I should warn you I'm a bit sick today which sucks because I've got my unit one business exam tomorrow great but I'm gonna be the sick one in the exam hall sniffing so I'm pretty sure none of you are gonna be in my exam I don't think so good luck guys and here we go so, what is demand and how do we draw it? Demand is the quantity of a good or service that consumers are willing and able to buy at a given price in a given time period. So, here, when you're drawing your demand curves, make sure demand is going downwards. Price level is always up here and quantity is always down there. You could always write price. You don't always have to write price level, but it's nice if you write price level. So, whenever you're starting off drawing your demand curves, make sure it's right in the middle of the thing. So, at P1, the price level is so if maybe it's like 50 pounds here there's about 200 units being demanded basically so the quantity demanded so i'm going to use an example of shoes i'm going to use converses so originally the prices of converses is around 50 pounds so if there was an increase say they increased it to 100 pounds maybe so prices are increasing from p1 to p2 from 50 pounds to 100 pounds it means that quantity demanded here for 50 pounds people are demanding less of it because it's 100 pounds now basically so some people might still buy it at 100 pounds that's why q2 isn't all the way at zero like some people still might buy converses if they're like really in love with it and they can't live without it but majority of the people wouldn't really buy the converses because it's from 50 like the prices have increased so your demand for it you might move on to vans instead or nike shoes so for decrease in quantity, so basically if Converse's fell from £50 to £20, there was a fall in price level and therefore more people are going to demand for Converse's because it's a lot more cheaper and you know Converse's are pretty good quality so why not hey? So what shifts the demand curve? Income, so if you've got an increase in income, so maybe you earn £10 a week and now you earn £50 a week, you're probably going to demand more despite Converse's like you're probably going to be one of those people in Q2 like here so although prices are increasing from £50 to £100 you're probably going to buy it because you have more income now although your income isn't enough for the shoes using my example but basically when you have more income you're probably going to demand more despite whatever the price is you're probably going to buy it if you really need it quality if quality is improving like a textbook would you rather buy a textbook from like a 99p store would you rather buy it from wh smith so the quality is better at wh smith so demand probably increases at wh smith rather than i don't know 99p store advertising when you see things on the advert you usually demand for it like coca-cola maybe you're thirsty whilst you're watching this and then maybe instead of like buying coca-cola you were originally thinking of getting pepsi but then you see the demand you see people advertising coca-cola and you're like hmm maybe i might just buy coca-cola so demand increases due to advertisement because people see it people want it like i don't know if you see something on the tv don't you usually like kind of want it depending on whatever it is like the kfc bucket i don't know is it like 10 pounds to get like a decent amount of food weather so in cold weather there'll be increased for demand for fuel and warm weather warm weather clothes so yeah so example so with the cold weather you're probably going to demand for more fuel in order for heating and stuff and you're probably going to want to buy more jumpers more sweaters blah 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 but when it's in the warmer season when it's in summer you'll probably go to demand for more i don't know vests and shorts and skirts and i don't know anything that's less clothing really because it's summer it's warm expectations this is more linked into um what is it what is the word it begins with i inflation that's it i was thinking interest but that's not it so inflation if you think prices are going to increase in the future you're probably going to buy things now if you think inflation is going to increase prices are going to increase you're going to buy the things that are cheaper right now but if you think prices are going to fall in the future you're going to save your money rather than spend it now so people so you'll like spend spend it later instead of and save it now so you probably keep it in a bank or something collect interest you know and substitutes and complements i've discussed this in a video and i'm pretty sure you've watched it if you haven't look back in my previous videos because i drew little pretty diagrams and stuff like that 
So the demand curve shifting to the right. So with these sort of examples, I'm going to use income. So if people have more income, demand is going to shift to the right. There's an outward shift, so it's going this way. It's nice if you draw the arrows as well. You don't have to, but it's nice if you do. Examiners will probably like it because you're adding more to your graph and it shows that you're on about things. And make sure supply is up here. So it, it's nice if you write S1 and then demand you show D1 and D2 so you know which one's the second one. So the second line would be the second number, if that makes sense. So D1 to D2. So incomes are increasing, people demand more converses, for example. So no matter what prices they charge, although prices are increasing, you're still going to demand more because your incomes are increasing tr too. True? Too. Ugh. Supply, what is it? So the definition for this is the amount of a product that producers and firms are willing to sell at a given price level. So I nicked this off the internet because I couldn't be asked to draw my lovely diagrams like this one anymore. So here, it's basically at 20p, there's 100 units being sold, well, quantity being supplied, and at 50p per, at, per unit, usually, there's 400 quantities being supplied. So what shifts the supply curve? Changes in the cost of production. Lower costs means that the business can supply more at each price. So if your costs are falling, then you're probably going to have a lot more money left over to buy more goods in order to supply more things so basically lower costs you could supply more a fall in the exchange rate i discussed this in a previous video so it's a weaker pound it means importing is dearer so buying things is a lot more expensive but exporting is cheaper so other countries from maybe france or india or china might want to buy your things because Imports are cheaper, It's che no, exports are cheaper, so it's cheaper for you to sell your goods and services abroad, so that shifts supply. Changes in technology, now this one I'm going to wait for the next video, well the next slideshow because it's really interesting. Government taxes and subsidies and regulations, so if the government is going to increase your taxes, usually corporation taxes, which is an intra no, a tax placed on your profits. So the more, it's usually 20% currently, so corporation taxes at 20 percent per business make sure you know that and so if there's an increase in taxation maybe it's like 50 percent so they're taking 50 percent of your profits you're going to probably supply less because you don't have that much income sort of thing changes in the price of substitutes in production i've discussed this in my previous video if you've seen that okay the fun bit okay so here a right shift in the supply curve from s1 to s2 if you've watched charlie the chocolate factory you're really going to love this example so you know Charlie's dad and how he always screws on the toothpaste, that's his job, like in the first little image here, he's always screwing on the little caps for the toothpaste. So if there was technological improvements, if there's more technology in the company, then there's going to be an Im increase in the supply, although unemployment will increase. So this is like a trade-off. So that is like one objective for the other. So you're increasing more GDP. There's more goods and services you're producing. But then again, at the same time, you're reducing employ unemployment. Because he's made he's been made redundant. And this is known as technological unemployment because machinery has like... Because the machines can actually put on the screws and test if the toothpaste are faulty and stuff. So that's my lovely example. So think of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and how the dad became unemployed making toothpaste or putting on the lids because machines could produce more at the faster rate and so it's cheaper in the long run. It's cheaper in the long run because a machine is probably about £10,000 for example but that's a lot of your income right now but if you think of it long term you can supply more. You can supply more to the, to the individuals at a lower price so p1 is falling to p2 and there's more being supplied so in the long run ten thousand pounds could make a, so much more profit than hiring workers that may be ten pounds per hour so make so they're being technologically unemployed basically because technology has taken over and therefore there's an increase in supply because you can produce more goods and services <laughs> And that's it guys, demand and supply. Good luck for your exam tomorrow because it is, what day is it? The 17th of May 2015. I've got unit one tomorrow and make sure you stay tuned because I might put on a little bit more, maybe even tomorrow morning. So maybe wake up at maybe seven o'clock in case I do upload a video. But good luck guys and thank you for watching.